In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate um, a fairly simple way of creating a 3D object using Inkscape. Um, I'm going to create a kind of recycle bin type of object. I'm also uh, using this key status application that HeathenX had uh, brought to my attention. I think it um, uh, may help people see which keys we're pressing, which mouse buttons, uh, things like that, because I tend to use a lot of shortcuts, and hopefully that'll help people keep track of, uh, of what I'm actually doing. And hopefully it won't, uh, won't interfere too much. So let's get going here. I'm going to choose the rectangle tool to start with. Draw a rectangle something like this. Bring up the fill and stroke dialog box, and uh, we're going to change this to a, a gray. And um, its alpha channel is fully opaque, but uh, the opacity slider is down about halfway. Um, we'll be changing that later, but for now, uh, we'll leave it that way. We're going to turn this object into a path, and uh, next, I'm going to double-click it to get the node editing. I'm going to highlight this side by clicking between, and then add a node in the middle. And same on the bottom here. Click again, add a node. So I want to have three nodes on the top, three nodes on the bottom. What I will do then is, sorry, double-click. I'm going to highlight those two nodes. I'm going to hold the control key and drag this down. And then I'm going to duplicate this object with Control D. And now the one that's on top, I'm going to double click again, grab those two nodes, and I'm going to drag up a certain amount. Kind of get our 3D box going here. Now I'm going to actually create. I duplicate again of this lower shape. Okay. Select it, hit Control D. And now I'm going to use um, the shape up here. I'm going to do a Boolean operation. I'm going to subtract one from the other because I want to just have this top diamond shape by itself. So I've got this shape, and underneath I've got that shape. So when I minus the two, path difference, it's hard to see here because they're both the same shade. Now I just have this, which is what I wanted. Okay. Now to make things clearer, we could always uh, maybe just take one of them, and change the opacity uh, a little bit, or maybe we leave the opacity where it is and just darken it a shade just so we can tell the objects apart. So there's the start of our our kind of recycle bin. Next I'm going to take these two objects and I'm going to combine them. They're both path objects so I'll choose path combine. Okay we're going to separate them later but the reason I'm doing that is I want to take this corner and this corner and I want to drag it out slightly. And um, by combining them, I can drag them both in unison and keep everything matched up. So I'll double click. And actually, there's two nodes here, even though one is on top of the other. I'm going to window it and then drag outward a certain amount. Window this side and drag outward, holding the control key. I want to keep the dragging horizontal. And now I'll take that object and go path break apart. So again we have our two separate objects. We can change the this here to make sure you see those two separate objects. Next I'm going to create uh, some rounded corners on this object. So what I like to do is um, as a starting point highlight the bottom three nodes and I'm going to make them symmetric. And now I'll take each one and holding the control key, I'm going to drag the radiuses of those curves a little bit smaller. You have to kind of be a little bit ginger with the 
mouse controls here. Kind of get the look you want to see. It's kind of a rounded corner look. Up top again, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll take this one, make that symmetric. Don't worry about the gap right now that you see between the lid and the and the side. You get that rounded the way we want. And now these ones here should be corner nodes, actually. Yeah, corner nodes. So we can actually take the handle. And this is just a lot of finesse the way, you know, you might want yours to look different than this. So, want some kind of rounded shape here. Something like that. And now, if I zoom in a little bit here, I'm going to do the same thing to this top shape. I'm going to make them, highlight them all, make them all symmetric. And then I'll hold the control key and drag these down. Now I want to make sure that there is some overlapping here. Okay. Like this. And we likely want to make sure our lid is up on top of above this side object. You can double check a little closer here to make sure you've got things overlapping correctly. Next I'm going to um, do some of the shading and, and things to get this to look like you know kind of a an open box or a recycling bin type of thing or a trash bin. So next I will highlight the top and I will hit Control D to duplicate it and I'm going to do an offset in using control shift bracket. Okay, so that's going to give me a rim around the top of this. What I'm also going to do is duplicate this side and double click it. I'm going to delete two nodes on the right, highlight this one, Drag this path vertical, highlight that node. Ah, I knew this thing would get in the way at some point, so maybe we stick it up here for now. Hold the control key. So I've got one side there. I'm going to, again, use control shift and the left bracket, or I guess it's showing up as the 9 key. I'm going to offset that in a little bit. I'm going to duplicate that once again, and I'm going to mirror it. Hold control, drag it over to the other side. So what I'm going to use these two shapes for is for shading. Okay. Now at this point it's probably wise to um, make things fully opaque, um, because everything's kind of semi-transparent and you, you don't get a feel for what shade anything really is, um, because things are overlapping and things that overlap are darker. Um, so we want to make things solid now. So we'll highlight that back one and we'll change its opacity to full. We'll just change the color to make it lighter. Okay, something like that. So now it's solid. Again with the key status, we'll maybe chase this thing around the whole screen as we go. Um, the two sides for now, we can make them solid. They don't have to be. Um, actually, we don't want them to be after, but we'll, we'll do that in a second. Now the lid, we want to make sure we select the bottom one, make it fully opaque, probably a little lighter, then select the middle one, again, fully opaque something like this. Just make sure everything is fully opaque. And I'll... I've got a guide out here. There. So, looking a little bit more reasonable. Now what I'm going to do is take this edge. Let me just get this moved over a little bit so we have some room. And I'm going to take that left side 
I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more and I'm going to blur it. Okay, B7. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to leave it a little, I'm going to lighten it, but leave it a little darker than this side. And I'm going to blur that up to 7 as well. And now you can see that kind of soft rounded look. I'm going to highlight both of them and I'm going to pull their opacity down. That's how I'm going to adjust that shading, make it a little more subtle. Okay, so that's kind of a, a nice smooth kind of plasticky looking box. Now as far as the lid, uh, what I've tried a couple times, and I've done this you know, a bunch of times here practicing the screencast, I'll make the main lid probably a little lighter. Okay, not too light. And then on the inside, what I'll do is actually change it to a gradient. Okay? And it's a gradient that is from, you know, solid color to a transparent color. So I can edit that gradient. And we'll make the solid color a little bit darker. Something like this. And maybe actually, you know what, we'll change the, um, we'll change the end to be solid, but a little lighter. Something like this. You can also play around with the path of the gradient. You might want a different kind of style of look here. Okay. The other thing I found that, that sometimes is a, a, a quick and dirty method of, uh, of adding some highlights here is I'm going to add a rectangle. Okay. At this point. We're going to make the rectangle white, for now fully opaque. I could turn it into a path, double click it, actually let me move it over here in the corner, double click it, double click there to add a node somewhere in the middle, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to drag that node up, and drag this whole thing up fairly close, and maybe even stretch it down a little bit more. And now I'm going to blur this object and fairly decent blur. Next thing I'm going to do is, while well, the object is selected, I'm going to select this gradient tool and I'm going to create it from opaque down to transparent so that highlight kind of disappears, okay? So there you can see it's kind of an inside corner highlight and again, to make things subtle, I'm just going to reduce its opacity a little bit this, with this overall opacity slider for that object, maybe even a little bit lower. Okay, so there's our kind of 3D box. Now, um, probably the, well, just about the final thing. I'm going to want to do is create a shadow under this, just a subtle shadow. So what I found is easiest to probably highlight this whole shape, make a duplicate of it so it's in front. I will uh, double click it and I'm going to basically delete the top three nodes. Highlight them all, hit delete. Looks kind of funny. But remember this shadow is going to be underneath this so I'll just take these down at some point you don't really care what the shape is like behind. You just want that face, this edge, to match the bottom of the um, object. I will make it black, add some blur, something like that. And now I'll send this to the back. So now we get that more realistic kind of shade underneath. Okay, so there's our, our little 3D uh, uh, recycle bin, or the start of one anyways. And um, the reason I did it uh, grayscale is I found it's, it's nice to be able to um, take this object and, and add color to it, kind of, uh, in a fairly easy way. And what I'll do is, um, first of all, I should have done this before, but um, if we highlight all the objects that make up 
this thing, but not the shadow. Okay, we're going to group them together. So we're going to hit Control G to group them together. So now this is one object. The shadow is another object. Okay, and what I'll do is take that object, duplicate it by hitting Control D, pull it over here, and now I'm going to highlight it again. Hold Control Shift G to ungroup it, so it's all its own separate objects. They're all path objects as well, and I'm going to um, do a union here. Okay, so now this is all one basically silhouette of this whole object. Maybe you know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to create a color. Let's say blue. Increase our saturation here and bring the opacity down. Okay. And I'm going to drag this over our object. And now we have a blue recycle jug or recycle bin. Um, and it's fairly easy just to change that color now because it's just an overhanging tint kind of on the object. Uh, another option might be um, before you do that is to ungroup this, move this again over top, and now if you want you can send this back actually take this stuff and bring it up above the green okay so now you have a green object with a gray inside so that's um, that's basically it uh, another neat thing I found in drawing like this because everything's symmetrical I found that I could actually um, if I wanted to I could duplicate this ah sorry about that Let me just highlight this whole thing yeah okay um, I could highlight this whole thing and basically uh, drag it down and still get a reasonably realistic looking object. Um, so if you, you know, take a little time, work out, you know, really look at the picture of an actual object or a drawing, um, see what the lighting is doing um, and what the shades and that are doing, the shading is doing, then you can actually come up with a pretty realistic object, fairly, you know, fairly simple uh, model in Inkscape. You can see this this whole thing is just a group of eight objects. Okay, there's not a lot of, um, you could go into a lot of more fussy detail, but that's actually um, a pretty simple object and yet it does look fairly realistic. So that's it. Hopefully uh, you got some uh, interesting info out of it and uh, maybe we'll use this key status thing again. Uh, it seemed to work uh, fairly well. Hopefully it helped you out. Thank you for watching.